we've completed step one, we can move on to step two. On this screen, you see all of the information in a nice summary format that you selected in part one. Over here on the right-hand side, you can see all the details. Here's our uh, what we're calling our mix, sample mix for summer grazing. We've got 100 acres in Hastings, Nebraska. It's in a tote. It's drilled. Our next crop is Milo. Here's our growing period. And then this, this will be populated as we build things. One of the th really nice features about the Smart Mix Calculator is that you get immediate feedback on what this mix is going to cost you. So right now it's telling me this mix is costing me zero dollars because I haven't haven't done anything yet. I haven't selected any species. But as we put things into the system, uh, you can see this cost portion change. And it's really important because uh, the cost is a very important feature of having a good mix. Up here, uh, here's the three goals that I selected. Supplemental grazing, provide lasting residue, and compaction breaking. Now right now, they're all set at zero because again, I haven't selected anything from the selection screen. At the bottom, uh, we have our C to N ratio. Uh, I'll talk later about what carbon to nitrogen ratio is, but it, it, it will give you an indication of how soft, or in other words, how fast your residue is going to decompose, or how hard, how long that residue is going to stick around. Um, and so I'll talk later about C to N ratio and where we really want to see that. It also has a slider scale here for the full rate that we want to try to accomplish, and we really want to shoot for about 125%. When you're putting together these diverse mixes, there's a couple ways that you can look at things. You can look at pounds per acre, you can look at seeds per acre, but really either one of those we feel is not a really strong way to, to determine how much seed you need when doing these diverse mixes. So we've come up with the concept of what we call percentage of a full rate, and what it does is it takes what we would normally consider a full rate of each individual species, and then whatever you select, so whatever you select is going to be the percentage. So for example, if cowpeas takes 50 pounds for a full rate and you choose 10 pounds to put in your mix, then 10 uh, into 50 is 20% and that's how much of that full rate it's going to be. And so then it, the program adds all those up and it tells you kind of where you're at. We want to shoot for around 125 or if you're going to do a grazing mix or you want a really diverse mix, we can go up as high as 150 to 200. At the very bottom, the mix effect potential ratings, uh, we have a scale for nitrogen, for grazing, for drought, for frost tolerance. Uh, this is how well it will survive a first frost. Winter hardiness is how well it will, uh, your mix is projected to overwinter in the particular plant hardiness zone that you're at. Uh, we have a score for diversity and then also for salinity tolerance. And as we add uh, our species on here, you'll see all of these things change. It's very interactive, all these things change. And the cool thing with this is, is you can go back and you can change what you have in your mix. You can change the, the amount that you have in the mix. And as you change things, you can see how it affects the scores that you have for your goals. You can see how that change changes your carbon nitrogen ratio. You can see how it changes the percentage of your full rate. And then also, uh, your nitrogen fixing and all these others. So it's kind of cool to go in there and just kind of play around, change the species, do a lot of different what-if scenarios, and look at how it affects not only your goals and uh, the mix effects, but also the price is very important as well. So you can kind of play around with it and do a lot of what-if scenarios. One last thing that I want to talk about on this particular screen, before we actually go into adding species, is this uh, feature right here called Smart Mix Auto Adjust. And it, it, by default, it is on. And what that's going to do is as you add species to your mix, the program is automatically going to adjust the seeding rate per acre for each of the species that you have selected. And it's always going to keep your mix at 125% of a full rate. Now, it's, it's, what I recommend people to do is that you turn that on as you build your mix. Once you kind of get all the species in that you want, you can turn it off and then you can manually change things. And I'll show you how to do that because you may want to emphasize some of the grasses more than you do some of the brassicas, and is particularly in a grazing mix. So I'm going to leave it on, and as we build our mix, it will automatically tell me how many pounds per acre of each thing that we want to put in there. But then when we get all the species in, we're going to turn that off and we'll kind of tweak it around and, and play with it a little bit. So lots of information here. 
I haven't even added anything yet, but just take some time when you when you build your first mix, just take your, some time to familiarize yourself with all these screens. So the next step that we're going to do after we get uh, kind of familiar with this is we need to add some species to this to see what we actually got going on here. So to start that, we're going to click this button right here that says Add Species. And when we click on this, it's going to bring up a number of different species uh, that, we, that we have available and that we sell. And each one of them, it has gone through and based on the goals that you've given, the time frame that you're planting, the next crop that will follow this cover crop, and your geography, it's giving each one of those a score or a rating. So we, these are the ones that are in the excellent category. We've got ones that are in the good category. Uh, we've got some that are considered marginal and some that are considered pretty risky. And those scores, you know, don't, don't take these as, as uh, gospel truth. These are all based on our recommendations. And because we're trying to spread this out over such a wide geography, you know, sometimes they're not exactly accurate. So generally, if you pick something that's in the excellent or the good category, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Uh, once in a while, there's some things down in the marginal category that uh, maybe shouldn't be. But uh, for right now, it's, it's the best that we have. And you can see that almost everything is either excellent or good. And that's generally what you'll see when you're planting, you know, kind of in the middle of the year because all the warm season things are going to be up in the excellent category. Some of the cool season things are still good because, you know, they'll still work and they'll still grow. Uh, as you get either earlier in the year or later in the year, you'll see more and more of those things push down to the marginal or risky category. So we're just going to kind of work within the excellent category here. I've got a number of legumes that are rated as excellent. We've got a number of grasses. We've got one brassica and a couple broadleaves. So I know that I want to do a grazing mix. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, yeah, I want to do some cow peas. Uh, we know we want some sun hemp. We've seen that work pretty well in the past. Uh, we will put in uh, some Austrian winter peas as well. Um, I want to do some of the um, Sweet Forever brown midrib. And maybe you don't know what this is. And as you hold your mouse over it, uh, you'll see the, the question mark there. And uh, it, it just tells you what the, the full name of that is. Now, eventually, we'll have a link here to where it will take you to a page that explains more about that. You'll be able to get to that to this next page right now. But for right now, you can't access that from here. So we're going to do some Sweet Forever. I also want a little bit of Pearl Millet in there. Uh, under the Brassicas, the only one that's rated excellent is Florida Broadleaf Mustard, mainly because it is a little more heat tolerant than some of the other things. But I know that I want some collards and maybe some turnips, and they're going to be listed here under the good category. So I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to put some collards in and some turnips in. And I got some buckwheat here. So that gives me eight species. It tells me right here how many species I've got in my mix. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to see where I'm at, and then we'll come back later and we can add some additional things. So I'm going to click on where it says add eight to the mix. And the program is going to now populate with all eight of those things that I have chosen. And because I had Smart Mix Auto Adjust turned on, it has automatically assigned each one of these 16% of the full seeding rate is what it's, it's telling me here. And, and you can tell over here on the, on the left-hand side under cow peas, uh, I'll just kind of show you what this means here. WSB means this is a warm season broadleaf plant, full 51 that means a full seeding rate of cow peas is 51 pounds. 4.1 K per pound means there's 4,100 seeds per pound on average on cow peas, and they cost 80 cents a pound. So all that information is going to be underneath each one of these species that I've selected. So you can see the full seeding rates of each one of these, and you can see the cost, and you can see the seed size as well. So that information is all there. One additional piece of information uh, that I was talking about earlier that is not on that first initial screen. But if you say, you know, I don't really know very much about cow peas. I'd like to learn more. There's a little information icon right here, and you can click on that, and it's going to come up, tell you it's a warm season broadleaf. But if you click on the button that says learn more, you can click on that, and it's going to take you to a page on our website that's going to tell you all about cow peas. You can, you can learn more about them. There's all these different tabs about how you use them, advantages, disadvantages, so forth and so on. Eventually we're going to also have a bunch of different videos that we've made 
uh, linking linking that back to, to this page. So for right now, you can click on that information icon. It will take you to a page where you can learn more about that particular species. So the pounds per acre that the program has selected is just simply 16% of the full rate on each one of these. So I've got 8 pounds of cow peas, 2.94 pounds of sun hemp, and you can see as we go on down through the list, that's what it's selected, just under a pound of turnips, 1.31 pounds of collards, etc., etc., or five, almost five pounds of buckwheat. I go over here and I look at my uh, price. I can see right now that this mix is going to cost me 98 cents a pound or $32.50 an acre. And I can further see that uh, of, of that cost, $29.78 per acre is seed, $1.07 is an inoculant uh, application, and then there's a mixing charge in there as well. So it always breaks out that cost for seed inoculant mixing. And if you chose 50 pound bags as your bagging option, it would show that there as well. So again, it's very important that as you design this mix that you try to stay within the budget that you've kind of set for yourself. And a lot of times on a good grazing mix, you know, 25 to $35 is not that uncommon for a grazing mix. It's also changed this part right here. It's telling us uh, that um, of my mix, uh, by weight, 59% of my mix is legumes, 19% is grasses, 7% is brassicas, and 15% is broadleaves. But by number of seeds, it's 13, 32, 45, and 10. So brassicas, for example, is 7% by weight, but it's 45% by the number of seeds. And it's 32% of my mix of a full rate or a percentage of a full rate. So you can kind of tweak those things up and down based on, on what you want to do and where you want to be. So as I look at my goals, my supplemental grazing goal, I've got 90% here. Uh, provide lasting residue, I'm at 60%. In compaction breaking, I'm at 80%. So I'm pretty good. I'm probably going to want to try to tweak this around a little bit to see if I can improve these just a little bit. As I go down and look at some of the other things, my carbon nitrogen ratio is just over 36. Uh, my percentage of full rate is kind of right in this target area. It's uh, shooting at between 125 and 128. I've got a 34% on nitrogen fixation. It's not great for nitrogen fixation, but it's not terrible. It's really hard to get a great score on nitrogen. You have to have almost all legumes and high rates to really get that nitrogen score up over 80. I've got a 95% on my grazing score, 79% on drought tolerance, 43% on frost tolerance. There's only a few things in here that aren't going to die with the frost, and that's okay because of how I want to use this. Not many of them are going to overwinter. It's pretty good diversity score, 83% out of 100 on diversity, and it's just kind of a little above average on salinity. So I've got all these different things, and now what I can do is I can, I can change anything I want to now. If I wanted to change, if, let's say, for example, I want to add another species. I forgot that I want some sunflowers and I want some okra in here because I want to see if I can get my compaction breaking score up a little higher than 80. So I can come in here. I could click my Add Species button again. I can come over here and I can find okra right there. And I think sunflowers is probably on the first screen. So we're going to click that. We're going to add those two things to my mix now. Okay, so I added those things in there. It's changed everything now to 13% of a full rate. It didn't really help my compaction score that much, but it did take my supplemental grazing from, from a 90% up to 100% because uh, sunflowers and ochre can both be pretty decent grazing plants. It actually lowered my cost per acre over here because it took away from some of the more expensive things and put in uh, some less expensive things. So as you add things, you'll see that cost per acre kind of go up and down a little bit. So now at this point, if I wanted to, to change, you know, like right now I only have three pounds of sorghum and two pounds of millet, and I know that I want that to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to turn the Smart Mix Auto Adjust. I'm just going to simply turn that off. It doesn't change anything initially, but what it allows me to do now is I can come in here and I can say, okay, I, want, I know I want seven pounds of that sorghum, and I want to have, uh, we're going to do four pounds of pearl millet. So we can change that. Now what it does, it doesn't change anything else, but you can see now my percentage of a full rate is 158. 
And I'm not afraid to push 150 to 160 on a good grazing mix. I think that's okay. That's appropriate because we know that the cattle are going to be eating some of that. So we need to push that a little bit higher than if it was just simply uh, a cover crop mix. But now my cost per acre is $34. I may want to cheapen that up just a little bit. So I can come over here and I can look to see here's my cost per acre of each one of these species. And I might say, well, you know, I'm going to trim this sun hemp down to just two pounds. Uh, the cow peas, I'm going to take down to, to five. And just simply by doing a few of those little changes and tweaks, I can get my cost back down to that $32 range, which is kind of about where I wanted it, where I thought it should be. So those are, those are all some of the different things that you can do on this. Uh, again, you can come in here, you can edit your details, you can change how many acres you have, you can change how it's packaged, how it's drilled, uh, different things like that. So lots of flexibility, lots of things that you can change here. I do want to just, one last thing I want to show you on this screen uh, before we go on to the completion screen. I'm going to turn the, the auto adjust back on because I want to show you uh, what, what that irrigation feature will do. So we're going to turn that back on. It's, it, it doesn't change my numbers. Well, I guess it just did. It changed my numbers back uh, to, the, to what the auto adjust would put on. But if you look right now, uh, my, my cow peas is 6.63. My sun hemp is 2.39. If you kind of remember those numbers, a little over 6 and a little over 2, I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit my details. Go back to my first screen here. And I'm going to tell the program, I'm going to tell Smart Mix that I'm really concerned about how dry it is. And I think I'm going to be 5 inches below normal in my precipitation. So I'm just going to tell it irrigation is negative 5. So I click continue. I go back to the screen. And now what it's done is it's automatically gone in and it's adjusted all of the seeding rates based on drier weather. Uh, typically in a drought, we would have less moisture, so we would probably want to plant less seed. So it's took my recommendation for cow peas from a little over 6 now to 5. Sun hemp was a little bit over 2, now it's 1.8. So it's reduced all of these proportionately based on the fact that I told it that I think I'm going to be in a dry period. It's also taken my cost down, where it was $32 an acre, now it's $21 an acre. So we can, we can kind of tweak that a little bit. You can go back, you know, conversely, we could edit these details again. We can say, you know what, I've been, the Lord has been blessing me, and I've got more rain than normal. I'm going to tell it I've got four inches of irrigation water. Even if you're not irrigated, if you think you're in a wet spot, or maybe you are irrigated, you can put that in. And again, you can go back and the program will take that into consideration. So now our cow peas, instead of being a little over six, we're almost eight. And our sun hemp is almost three. <coughs> again, it's taking our cost up a little bit because the seeding rate is higher. But the yield potential on this is higher as well. Now these are only going to change automatically like this if you have the auto adjust turned on. If this auto adjust was turned off, you would see the, the full rate of recommendation, you would see this change. Remember, it was 51 on cow peas initially. Now it's 61 because of that, of that extra water that we're telling the program uh, that, that this crop is going to get or hopefully get. So you can kind of tweak that around, and you can see how that changes based on either positive irrigation or negative irrigation. And uh, that's kind of a cool feature that you can do. So lots of different things you can always go in. You can, you can delete species. Um, you can, if you want to delete a species, just simply click on this X right here. So let's just say we decided we didn't want okra. So we just click on that right there. Takes the okra right out. And if, again, if Smart Mix Auto Adjust is on, it will adjust all the other rates to compensate for taking that okra out. And if we wanted to manually set our rates, we would just turn Smart Mix off. So you can look at the scores that we have down here for nitrogen, for grazing, and it's, it's just fun to sit around and change the species, change your seeding rates, and see how all the different charts and all the different scores uh, work as you add and, and subtract things. So I'm going to wrap up this portion of the tutorial. Uh, we will come back and do another one that talks about the final steps of this.